all benefited from what that group of ladies did. Savannah wouldn't be Savannah today had they not saved the houses that they saved. They knew the history and they were a part of the fabric of this community that was really very, very special. Lucy Barrow McIntyre was endowed with a keen sense of responsibility toward humanity, which she used to enrich the lives of her fellow Georgians in numerous ways. She was from Athens, Georgia, and moved here. As children, I remember her when she lived on Gordon Street, probably most, and then she moved down the block from us on 41st, so I was in and out of her house every single day. Born in 1886 into a prominent Athens family, Lucy married Savannah attorney Francis Percival McIntyre, and they settled in his hometown where they raised a family of six children. He was in the army, and a motorcycle came by. He was on the back of a horse, and the horse, and he fell in a ditch. The horse crushed his spine. And as a small child, I can remember that he could walk with difficulty, a cane. But that began to progress, and he became an invalid. And I think because she had six children and an invalid husband, she just had to do what she could. Lucy Barrow McIntyre, Miss Lucy to everybody who knew her, was an exceptional person who had a significant influence on her community. And she had so many causes she was interested in. And of course, the one that impacts us so much today, the founding of the historic Savannah Foundation. We would probably be sitting on a parking lot if it hadn't been for the early efforts that she took to make sure that the city was maintained and it survived as the beautiful city it is. Well, I remember Anna Hunter coming to the house and I would sort of hang around to listen, knowing something was important. And she kept saying, Lucy, we've got to do something about this. And I think the reason she came to my grandmother, two reasons. One, my grandmother was someone that was beautifully connected on all levels in this community. So she would be able to move a project forward. There had been lots of failures in the past to form an organization that could promote the history of the city. So Miss Lucy had to work this carefully. She needed the right mix of people and the right attitude to make positives come out of this. And she did. And then with a great announcement, people wanted to come on board. Here's a group of people that look like folks I appreciate and would like. These ladies must know what's going on. They're all married to important people, and they're making a stand here. The seven women really were influential, and Miss Lucy was the person who picked them out. But she had a quiet way of doing that, so, I mean, she was never overbearing. She just, you know, she'd have these ideas, and they obviously were very good ideas. Lucy McIntyre helped found local chapters of the League of Women Voters and the Junior League of Savannah, serving as the first president. She was also president of the Savannah Suffrage Association, and the Georgia Federation of Women's Clubs. Her energetic efforts on behalf of Woodrow Wilson's presidential campaign led to her appointment as the first Georgia committee woman on the Democratic National Committee. We see that civic responsibility repeat itself time and time again. And she would be the backbone of the Democratic Party in Chatham County that was the majority party throughout that era. Well, the Junior League of Savannah was founded in 1926 when two prominent Savannah women's circles decided to join forces and come together and apply to the Association of Junior Leagues International. And they were accepted. And the first president was Lucy McIntyre. And she immediately began taking her group to the forefront of social change for women and children and all types of issues in the downtown and surrounding Savannah areas. Just a few years ago, the Junior League of Savannah named their first volunteer of the year for the provisional class after her. So that is now awarded annually and that's been the last five years. So, I mean, there's still honors being bestowed upon her and her legacy. As sustaining advisor, she instilled in League members that we were all privileged people who had an obligation to be helpful 
in a broader sense. And that, you know, that, I took that to heart. I think her tremendous love for the people of Savannah and particularly the people who were less fortunate, she always looked at life as a possibility, looking for the opportunities that came in, in every arena to make things better for other people, not just herself or her family, but for anyone in need. I remember particularly that she opened her home during the Civil Rights era to African Americans and just set a very high standard for the community. When the civil rights movement struck in Savannah, she was one of the reasons it never turned violent or turned ugly like Albany, Georgia and some of the bad cases in Georgia. But we saw something else that happened. There was a power shift. In the election of 1964, many people switched over to the Republican Party because of their disappointment with the way civil rights had crept in so quietly, but not Miss Lucy. Her mother died when she was quite young, but she had a personal servant, and this was a young black girl whose job was to come into my grandmother's bedroom in the morning, light the fire, get her out of bed, get her dressed. She went on to write a story about this little girl and how she wasn't much older than my grandmother, but she was charged with this great responsibility. My grandmother was one of the leaders in civil rights in this community. And I think it was part of that time that she had as a child, knowing how different their stations were in life and how unfair it was. Lucy McIntyre's artistic interests included amateur theater and poetry. She helped found the Georgia Poetry Society in the early 20s and won a number of its prizes during a 44-year membership. Here were ladies who were interested in poetry. They would sit down and write their own poems. They'd also bring in noted poets to Savannah for programs. The organization is still alive and well. She received a number of awards. She wrote a good bit of poetry, even up until very close to her death. She was a very observant woman, so she could describe the world in very colorful terms, which was delightful for her grandchildren. <laughs> in the spirit of the progressive era in which she grew up, Lucy McIntyre helped to establish a free lunch program in the Chatham County schools long before the federal government became involved. If you looked into the public classrooms in Savannah, Georgia in the 1920s, you saw children that were bone skinny. And Miss Lucy realized, probably through her wide reading, through many club publications, that there's a better way. And she started off with a milk program. And then finally that built into a lunch program so children could at least be assured of one meal a day and what a difference that made for the learning environment. She made sure that women and children in the impoverished areas of Savannah were taken care of, from the free lunches to making sure that they had clothing. But that was just one aspect of her. She was so well-rounded. We've um, known that she organized the WPA. That was an appointment from President Franklin Roosevelt. And through that position, she put many Savannah people to work of all statuses of life. And she did it in a very impressive and low-keyed way. And she continued that affinity with the Democratic Party well into the 1960s. Not surprisingly, Savannah recognized her good works with numerous awards. She was named Woman of the Year in 1955 and was given both the Groves Award for Outstanding Contributions to Savannah's Progress and the Oglethorpe Trophy, Savannah's highest civic award, in 1958. She could have sat on the sidelines and done nothing and had a relatively comfortable life, but she was not of that type. She was going to do something and make her life matter. But I don't think it ever entered her mind that she shouldn't. And I think that's the kind of person that always makes a difference. Lucy McIntyre died in 1967 and is buried in Laurel Grove Cemetery. For six decades of unceasing selfless service and effective leadership in making her city, county, and state a better place to live, we take pride in naming Lucy Barrow McIntyre a Georgia Woman of Achievement. <laughs>